Uh, welcome back, veterans, to uh, this segment of Veterans Did You Know? I'm here today with Steve Pruitt, who's a service officer with the Disabled American Veterans. And if you haven't caught the first segment, so I think this is the fourth one, you need to go back to the first one because we've been talking and covering a lot of information about uh, service programs, service officers, uh, ability to help you, uh, kind of things we're looking for. In the last segment, we ended up with uh, Vietnam vets and, and the results of Explosion Agent Orange. Uh, and how that impacted that whole generation of veterans. And um, unfortunately, we didn't learn any lessons from Vietnam, and we find ourselves in another conflict over here that started August 2nd uh, with the first Gulf War until today, and we're still engaged with it. And so we see we have a whole bunch of veterans that are coming back or that are at back now, and we talk about some of these presumptive conditions like with, uh, with Agent Orange and the diabetes and the, some of the cancers, whatever things. Is there, is there something happening now with the, 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 the Gulf War vets that are, uh, that are coming back? What are you seeing here? Absolutely. They, uh, Gulf War veterans have their own list of presumptive diseases. Unfortunately, I'm not as familiar with that list as I am with the Vietnam veterans, but uh, you need to come in and check with the service officer or directly with the VA or however you want to go about doing it, the important thing is checking into it. Uh, but yes, the uh, Gulf War veterans do have their own list of uh, presumptive diseases that uh, they can be granted a service-connected disability for. Uh, but just to give you an idea, for example, uh, many of the Gulf War veterans were exposed to burn pits uh, where they've burned or have been around or exposed to to smoke from uh, burning human waste and uh, raw crude oil, oil you know, oil fires right, fire. right, and and other hazardous chemicals and materials, and these can cause a whole slew of breathing problems for these guys, for these men and women. So uh, if they've had breathing problems, they need to, of course, get medical treatment for it, but they need to check to see if what they've been diagnosed with has been added to the list of presumptive of conditions for Gulf War veterans, uh, which also any respiratory related cancer for Vietnam veterans is also on the list of presumptives for Vietnam veterans as well. So you want to make sure that you check into that. You know, uh, we had a couple, we have a guard and a reserve unit here at 180th and 1436. So we had a lot of folks that have gone out of here and come back. And I've gone up and talked to them, and they said, you know, uh, I think I got stuff wrong with me that from when I was over there in Afghanistan or Iraq or the first Gulf War. Uh, but boy, you know, I'm, I'm in reserves, and, and if I file for a claim uh, and then I'm disabled, what happens to me? Do I have to get out of the military? And uh, can I draw both? Can I draw uh, disability pay and reserve pay? Do uh, you know anything about how that, how that works? Well, as far as whether or not you would have to actually get out of the military, that would be between you and your unit. I mean, if, if you're no, no longer physically able to complete your duties, then that, that would be up to your unit to determine whether or not you were physically able and, and to either retain you or discharge you. Uh, you could receive a medical discharge potentially, but uh, as far as receiving uh, pay from both, no, it's, it's against the law to receive active military pay, uh, even from the Guard and or Reserve, and VA disability compensation pay. You cannot receive both, and the VA will make you choose if you are allowed to stay with your unit and continue your service. But it say if I hurt my knee uh, and I'm rehabbed and I got service connected for 10 percent, but I can still pass my physical fitness, uh, I can I can be awarded the disability and not accept the pay and stay in the regard reserve so that when I do get out, uh, I still have that, that that disability on the record there. Now I can say okay, now it's either gotten worse or I want to start being paid for it because I'm not being paid by the guard. That's record. correct. When you get out, you can start receiving that effective the day after you're discharged from service. Okay. You know, an, an, another symptom we have uh, that really started with the Vietnam vets was the PTSD or post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, and we're finding that these young men and women coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq are, are running about the same rate, uh, you know, 20% or maybe even a little higher than that, one out of three, 30%, uh, are coming back with that condition. 
I, right. I mean, we know a lot about it, but uh, the nemesis they have now also is this traumatic brain injury. Right. So, um, just if you had a physical disability, uh, if you hurt your back or your knee or you lost an arm or a leg or an eye or whatever the case may be, uh, you can be service-connected disabled for post-traumatic stress. You That's have right. a, a condition uh, that, that has affected you mentally uh, and is just as debilitating as if you did lose an arm or a leg or whatever else. And so do we have... Uh, uh, can you get 100% for post-traumatic stress? Do you have any of those? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought that up because the uh, VA has seemed to lessen, lessen the restrictions on uh, filing or being granted a service connection for post-traumatic stress these days. It used to be that you had to be in combat or be the victim of a traumatic uh, assault or attack of some, some type. and. Uh, um, if you were in combat, you had to be awarded a medal uh, for heroism, like a Bronze Star or Purple Heart for being wounded, or at the very least, at least be awarded a Combat Infantryman's Badge to show that you were in combat. Well, uh, they've lessened the restrictions and you no longer have to absolutely have a medal uh, that says that you were uh, the result of some traumatic experience or injury, um, basically now you just need to tell your story um, to a psychiatrist or psychologist, be diagnosed with a condition, and then VA will investigate and look for verification of the injury uh, or the action that occurred, I mean, uh, because they're going to research it through the Joint Services uh, Research Center to try and make sure that the incident that you relay actually happened and once they find that verification and they see that you've been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress uh, then chances are you will be uh, awarded a disability compensation for that and it can be anywhere from as little as well zero uh, percent which is still a service connected uh, rating to as high as potentially a hundred percent well, I know uh, a lot of, in the old days, like you said, the, uh, you said, you know, I was in a firefight and I saw a couple of guys get killed and, uh, uh, and blew up and, you know, I, I just, that was in my mind. It's been there for 30 years. I can't get rid of it. I'm seeing somebody. But in the old days, you'd say, well, tell us who was there and give us some affidavits, you know, and in the military, uh, right. uh, Joe Christ said, half the guys didn't know what their name was. It was Ski or Pete or Bo or doc or where we didn't know who the guys were their whole name well you just went by what whatever nickname you gave them well if all you can remember is a nickname that's good too because at least that tells them something and they can usually tie a nickname in with an actual person but I, they'll go you you were with the 180th and uh and it was at this site and this time they say so they'll go back with the ark and say yeah the unit was involved in a firefight at that time exactly there casualties there and that that so that that helps them that's right your case so if you ever Ever apply for post-traumatic stress and were denied uh, and and because you couldn't find the information reapply I come right. back and reapply for it and, and let them let them go back through their research again again you got everything to gain and nothing to lose uh, I believe in the shotgun effect blast away and see what falls down but that's you, right nothing's gonna fall if you don't lock and load and, and you know pull the trigger on the deal so uh, again it's your responsibility it's your body it's your condition it's you who has suffered with this for X amount of years or however it is, and if you want to do something about it, do it. Uh, but by not doing anything, then you hurt all of us. You hurt all the vets because, quite frankly, the only reason we have Steve here in Muskegon is because a number of vets are coming in, and it's worth his while to come over here once a week uh, and see 10 or 15 people when he comes over and file a claim for him. If nobody right. came in, he, he goes someplace else where there's vets who really want the help. And the only reason we have this clinic here with 3,500 people assigned to it it's because the veterans are coming in here and saying, you know what, these are my benefits, I've earned them, and I want them. And that's why we have it here. So uh, it, you gotta be proactive a little bit. You gotta take the, uh, the initiative, uh, you gotta put some of your paperwork together, you gotta do a little homework, uh, and Steve is sitting here ready, and I'm here ready to help you uh, to go through that, walk through that uh, that's right. field, if you will, of <laughs> paperwork and whatever else. But don't get discouraged. Uh, don't get discouraged because you know uh, there are benefits there, and if you know you're injured, uh, then you need to apply for it. And don't be leaning over the fence talking to your neighbor and griping because he got hearing aids and you were in the same unit and you don't have them. Well, you know what? He came down and applied for them and you did. That's right. And the military is big on use it or lose it. That's exactly what it is. 
So we're going to take another quick break here, and uh, we'll be back to see you in just a few minutes. Thanks uh, for staying with us.